What up, Das here? Uh, hey. So I'm a little late to the, not late to the party, but like um, Eric released his paper on the first. I was gonna do something on the first and then I was like, ah, I haven't had time to read it. So what's the, wh what am I gonna say? <laughs> 69 pages. Um, it appears I skimmed through it. And by skim, I mean really skim. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot of math towards the end or towards like the two thirds of it. Um, so I'm scared I'm not gonna, or that it's gonna take me forever to try and do anything with it. But we'll see, we'll see. Um, what did I wanna say really though? Um, I, I, uh, the Eigen Bros have released a video where they're um, discussing the paper and its release and uh, they get into a little bit. I'm, I'm only 15, 20 minutes in to uh, the video, um, but I had something that came to mind, so I thought I'd record. Um, they describe, uh, they're discussing at first, they're just trying to set up, uh, like, framing Eric's argument, right? Like, what is he doing? He's talking about a four-dimensional manifold, and then from there, there are fibers, and then there's a fiber bundle. And they, um, they discuss, there's a guy, I assume he's a physics lecturer or something, I'm unfamiliar with him before now, but, um, he's giving a lecture about fiber bundles, and he discussed something, or he discusses something very similar to the start with an X4 manifold and then make a cylinder out of a, you know, the rim of a glass, let's say, right? So what caught me though, when, cause they, um, they, in, they play some of the guy's lecture and I'll put the video in the, the description, but they play some of the guy's lecture and then they discuss it a bit more. The guy's lecture, he's, uh, I'm, again, I'm only 15, 20 minutes in, I think, but they, um, I think there's an incredibly important distinction that they seem to gloss over, the Eigenbros seem to gloss over, at least in this first chunk, is that the guy, the lecturer, says uh, he doesn't use, like, say, a drawing of a piece of paper that's X4 and then, boop, create, like, a bunch of fibers above it, like you may have seen in the other video I did. And they don't use a glass rim to create a paper towel tube, right? What this guy does is he discusses... Hold on. <laughs> Gotta drive. Um, what he does is he just draws a line and he says like, look, this is one dimensional, but it could be any dimensional, got it? So he draws a line that's horizontal. And then he says like at each point in this line, pretend that there is a fiber going vertically above it, but he's not gonna draw all of them because that'd be an insane amount of, you know, infinite vertical lines. So he draws just like one or two or three. So horizontal line, it's gonna get louder in here probably. Horizontal line, and then a point on the line equals a, a connection point between the horizontal line and a vertical line. And the vertical lines are the fibers. Vertical lines are fibers. And the horizontal line is the base space. Then he describes the combined structure of the base space and its fibers. That total structure is the fiber bundle. That is not something that was clear to me before. I was kind of assuming, not based on anything particular, I guess, just like internal assumption, that the fiber bundle referred to specifically the space of all possibilities, right? If the base space is down here, then the fibers sort of represented this total possibility space or this total, total relational space. And that space was the fiber bundle because there's like so many of them, right? They look like a, a bundle of things of straw or something, right? Like a bunch of flowers you could gather up in one grip. <laughs> in one grip. Like, uh... So, if that... That isn't the fiber bundle, though. And maybe the assumption is based on, like, oh, you know, a human being grabbing things, that would be a bundle. It looks like a bunch of vertical sticks. I could bundle those sticks. The base space is, like, a separate thing. That's why it has a different name. But no, he referred, at least... And I haven't, I'm gonna watch that guy's whole video and see what's going on. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, but I don't think I am so far. That it's not just the fiber space. That's not the fiber bundle. The bundle is the combination of the base space plus the fibers. That's specifically what's referenced to the bundle. That's why I guess you're using the term bundle because you're bundling together the fibers, which are one category of thing, and the base space, which is another category of thing. And together they are a bundle. If that's the case, 
one, that wasn't clear to me before. That's interesting. And it makes maybe the 14 dimensional structure Eric talks about more uh, coherent to me. Cause I was always kind of like, okay, six plus four, you get 10. Why do you add another four? If the base space is four, why are you replicating it? And it's like, well, you, it's a pullback from the 14. It's a, or it's a projection of the 14. But I was like, but why are you doing that? Cause isn't it implied in a way that like, either we exist in the four dimensional base space or the base space is four dimensional that just happens to coincidentally be the the number of dimensions that we experience day to day three dimensions of space one at a time that's four and it's like no no no. it's like you start with a base space of four and then from that there are six relationships between those directions right six plus four is ten and that is the fiber bundle is 10 and it becomes 14 when you basically say the fiber bundle is where all of the things are happening all the physics is occurring and then our experiential reality our perspectival reality is a is like a four dimensional sampling of the 10 dimensional fiber bundle that is why it's 14 and then i'm assuming based on implication more than anything else i'm assuming that different pieces of the entirety that is physics, um, different pieces occur like either in the, on the base space and some things happen like almost entirely. And then other things happen almost entirely in the, you know, six dimensional fiber bundle area or other things happen across, like in like completely uh, deeply involved in the entirety of the fiber bundles, 10 dimensions. And then some things may even happen exclusively or partially on the four dimensional cross section that we're using to interact with the 10 dimensions, right? This also gives me more insight into, and I hope I'm right about this. If I'm not, then it's not insight. It's just miscom miscommunication or confusion, but um, it makes more sense as the observer snap because I was kind of, I think, conceptualizing it as like the base space is one part of the stadium and the metaphor of the observers, right? base space is one part, the, the uh, fibers above is another part, and the interaction between the two is sort of like the dynamic, you know, baseball game being played, and then like the players are sort of distinctly different from the, uh, the people, the fans in the stands, but they're all in the stadium. It seems like I might be confused there. It might be more that if you think of the observers as a two-piece system with a connection between the two, that it's like the fiber bundle is one piece. The four dimensional sampling or the four dimensional pullback rather is another piece. And the interaction between those two pieces is also incredibly important to the observers. So it's like maybe like what would be in the metaphor in the baseball stadium, let's say uh, the 10 dimensions, mm, the base space plus the fibers equaling a 10 dimensional fiber bundle that might be analogous to the baseball game itself, right? The players and the field and the coaches, etc. The fans in the stands are the four dimensional pullback. And then the interaction between the two is that yes, information and observation, etc., can all happen back and forth between the two, right? The fiber bundle can perceive things on the four dimensional pullback maybe, and the four dimensional pullback can perceive things happening in the 10 dimensional. And there's sort of a specificity to what information and what um, impact that has going one way or the other you know just like in a baseball game the players could hear like uh, the crowd booing them while they're up to bat or you know or throwing trash into the into the field while like you know some hated players getting onto first base or something and the players actions right say they you know, smash a home or a grand slam well, the audience, so the, the fans in the stands are maybe gonna all of a sudden, a bunch of them, stand up and cheer and make a bunch of noise that they wouldn't have done otherwise. So maybe those, and again, like if you have a better idea or you understand this deeper and you think I'm, mis I'm uh, misunderstanding this, that the observers is not the fiber bundle and the four dimensional pullback as the two main pieces and the interaction between the two is sort of the dynamicness between the two. Um, and instead it is like base space plus fibers. Those are the two pieces and somehow the pullback is like another thing. Um, please comment or, you know, shoot a video and describe it to the rest of us because I'm just trying to figure this out. Um, yeah, 
Uh, I'll include the Eigen Bros video below uh, or link to it. Um, and I'll also include a link to the physics lecture, the or the fiber bundle lecture that they're discussing in their video so that you can watch that. I think it's like an hour and change. I'm intending to watch it today. Um, yeah, a uh, quick update with the rest of the stuff that I've been doing. I only, I only have like two videos out there, but um, I am still pu pushing forward on the Oxford lectures. I think I may have said this before, but if I didn't, um, it's generally broken up into GU, GU units one, two, and three, I think. There might be a four, actually. It's been so long since I saw the end of the video. Uh, and then he does a PowerPoint presentation where he tries to get a little more specific and has slides and data and uh, typed up equations versus the ones he's doing on the board. So um, I had gone into it having seen the lecture several times going like, okay, when I'm going through and just dissecting it and writing notes and researching and chasing down what I don't understand that's not being explained in the lecture. Um, I was under the impression based on my experience watching it before that uh, GU part one was really long because there was a lot of context setting and frame setting. And then parts two and three uh, were much shorter. And so once I got to part two, I was like, oh, cool. I'm like on my way to the end and then I'll hit the PowerPoint and I'm done. Um, what I forgot was that part two and three are much denser as far as math is concerned and equations are concerned. So while they are shorter, um, it's kind of taking me just as long to get through, if not longer, it's like moment to moment of really chasing down so I understand what's going on before I go to the next five minute chunk and really get it. So it's taking longer than I thought, um, which I guess shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, including myself. <laughs> um, so I intend to finish that soon. I will also uh, be uh, doing some kind of video on the paper. Um, I kind of think it makes more sense to understand the Oxford lecture first before I really, I will read the paper, but I feel like I'll be maybe even more lost doing that if I skip ahead to do that before finishing out my Oxford lecture. It's gonna set everything back. It's gonna take longer to do this, but that's fine. Um, but I feel like I really would benefit if I really understand a lot or all, hopefully, of the Oxford lecture and then go into the paper, I might actually have like things to say or understand it. Uh, whereas if I skip ahead, no such uh, promise. Um, I'm also going to uh, tackle at some point the, um, what do you call that, response paper from uh, Timothy Nguyen, I think, and then the anonymous person. Eric mentioned that there was somebody and some anonymous guy on Joe Rogan on the first when he, you know, announced basically that his paper was out. Um, I'm going to read that those guys' paper, or those people's paper, who knows who anonymous is. Um, but again, I feel like I kind of need to understand his theory pretty good before I can interact with a response paper with any kind of usefulness, right? So yeah, so all of that's coming. Uh, there's another video I've been spending a lot of time on that uh, has been involving a lot of drawing. That's why it's taking so long. Um, but I think it'll be pretty cool when it comes out. So that's been occupying some of my time. So I haven't been doing the Oxford Full Blast. I've been doing this other video too, this other GU video, but um, hopefully, I don't know, next few weeks, hopefully. I only have so much time in a given week to devote to this, unfortunately. So, especially with all the drawing, which is like 5X what I thought it was gonna take. Um, it's taken a while. So yeah, um, this video is vertical because it's in the car <laughs> and I'm driving. Uh, yeah, all right, anyway, happy GU paper got released day, several days ago, almost a week ago or so. Um, and I will see you all later. Bye.